Hello and welcome back to At Home With She Can Grace. I'm Kimberly. I know it's been a little while since I've been on here again, but trying to figure everything out with scheduling and getting videos done has been a little difficult, but I feel like I got it figured out now. So, got a quick project this morning. We're gonna be doing a couple different things. Um, I have some terracotta pots and you may have seen this, this done in various ways before. But what I've done is, now I want you to be able to see like the texture and the coloring that I have in there. I've seen these, um, well I have a couple of them. They, they're terracotta pots but they look more like cement and they are white, kind of creamy with a little bit of moss and that on them and I really like them. So I thought, well, I'm gonna try this um, and see what I can get. So I've done it a few different ways. This is the way that I liked it the most. Um, and I'm gonna explain all of that and I'm gonna show you um, what happened when I just applied it a little differently. And then I made some little tags. This one, um, it's kind of, it's double-sided, so you can do whatever you'd like, but I did make a thyme, an oregano, and a mint, and I thought that um, those would be really cute sitting in a kitchen window, um, or if you want to use them other ways, I've got lots of actually different tags. We'll get to the tags a little bit later. I'll show you some different examples and uh, link the files down where you can get them. Okay, so I, let's see here. I just took um, this plaster of Paris and some water, mixed it up. I wanted a fairly thick, um, so it doesn't really, like it might drip off the brush a little bit if you shake it down. I wanted it pretty thick. I didn't measure. Probably two parts plaster of Paris to one part water. Um, I just kept adding little bits until I got um, the desired thickness that I wanted. Um, okay, so I wanna show you, like I was playing around trying to get a whitewash look, which this is still really, really cute. All this is is um, really watered down chalk paint. I use Rust-Oleum, it's the linen white. Um, probably want the English, but it's the linen white. That's what I use. Um, and I just really watered it down and rubbed this on. Um, it dries super quick. The terracotta, of course, soaks it all up. Um, so that is cute. Not quite what I wanted because I really wanted like that cement look. So the next ones, I um, sponged on my mixture and when it was dry, then I sponged on my colors of the linen white country gray mixed with a little bit of the charcoal, still the Rust-Oleum chalked um, and sponged it on. And, and like they're, it's cute. I like them. Um, I haven't sealed any of this, so the chalk is still coming off on my hands, but um, still wasn't quite what I was after. So I'm gonna show you what I did to achieve this and take you through it step by step and then we'll make some cute tags after. All right, so I just got really sloppy. <clears throat> oh, let's take this off the bottom. Okay, so I just started gooping it on and it dries fast, but I wanted lots of ridges. I don't know if you can see that, but I wanted lots of ridges and I want that brush mark to go in different directions. And I was okay if it um, showed some of the terracotta through there a little bit too. We'll come back to that, we'll finish the bottom here and then I gotta stick my hand in there to finish it. Um, make sure that you are coming all the way 
way up to the lip as well. And if I got going like too much in one direction, you really just don't have, like you can just go over it. You don't have to be careful with this. Um, it's, you just, I just wanted texture. I really wanted it to look like cement. So you can actually just leave it like this if you wanted. I mean, you'd seal it, of course. Okay, so I'm gonna set this aside because it takes a couple hours for, for that to dry. But I have got one that is all done. Um, so you can see it's a little bit smaller of a pot and it's all dry. Now, you can take and um, if you've got too big of ridges and a lot of goopies on there, you could sand it off a little bit. I'm happy with the way it is. So we are going to go to the next step. So I've got charcoal, oh, country gray, and the linen, what do I call it? Linen white. My lid doesn't fit back on it, so it's, I, I am constantly like dipping in there. I should probably pour it into something else, but I don't know. Those new lids that they got, they just don't close for me very well. Um, I just want to just shake that up just a smidge more just because I noticed that it had just separated a little tiny bit. Okay, so I'm going to push these over a little bit so you can still see what I'm doing. Okay, and I realized that when I started filming, I didn't flip it, so everything's backwards. I apologize. I will hopefully get that right here sometime soon. Okay, the trick to this is lots of water because this is also going to um, dry really fast and we want to be able to move it around. So I work fairly quickly and I am constantly dipping in my water there. So I'm starting with white and actually what I do just to make this go a little easier is I just, um, I always have wax paper down here because things don't stick to wax paper and while things are curing and drying and if you have to stack them, I always put wax paper in between them. It protects them and stuff doesn't stick. Okay, so I've got some white out and let's grab my other brush here and I'm gonna pull some of the charcoal out, rinse off before I pull some of the country gray out. You really don't need a lot. I'm only gonna show you the pots. Um, I'm not gonna show you the saucers just because I don't have any anymore. Uh, saucers are always hard to find up here. So, um, I don't have them for this right now, so I don't know what I'll use, but we'll figure that out. Okay, lots of water. We're just gonna crisscross. There's no rhyme nor reason to this. Um, said there's already a lot of water in my brush, so this moves around really good. I'm gonna pick up some of the dark, need more water, and I just, want to get this on. This is the ugly stage. You always have to remember stuff like this always has stages, but we, you need to layer it. Um, so that's what gives you that depth and all that coloring. So you can take like a damp paper towel. Um, I actually have some dried out baby wipes uh, that I'm going to use here. I just sprayed them with a little bit of water and all I'm doing now is going through maybe a little bit more water and I'm just blending it together. Don't be scared if it um, covers up too much of your pot or if it starts taking away um, some of your paint back down to the plaster. It does, that's okay. 
We've got a few different techniques on that we're going to do here. Uh, not techniques, layers that we're going to do. Okay, really what this helps do by rubbing it in and moving it around is it pushes that paint down into all those cracks and crevices because that's really where I want it to be. That's why I left it so textured because I want, I want that look. Okay, and it's all I'm doing is softening out the edges. You see, there's just not, I just don't want harsh brush strokes on there. Next, take the white and start going back over. And you don't need to cover it all up. The, the white needs a couple coats. Um, you will notice like it's going on pretty thick and white, but as it starts to dry, you'll start to see some of the gray come through. And if you add more water in, it's gonna kind of reactivate that gray down below. Okay. So I, you can also see some of the terracotta through there still, and that's okay to me. So, this is kind of where we are at so far. I let that totally dry. Um, you can put more um, white on this before the last step, but this just needs to dry a little bit. I mean, I could go in and just start really thickly laying on some more white. And if you get it on too thick, just grab a baby wipe and start wiping it down in certain spots. Just wanna show you what it looks like a little bit more layered up. And you can see where that dark gray is like down in those crevices. So it really helps give it some depth. Okay, so I've got another one here at that stage. Maybe I put a little bit more white on it um, than the other guy, but that's okay because we're going back and forth um, a couple times here. All right, so I did not get the rest of my paints ready for you. So I just have some greens that I just pulled out from Americana paints and a couple browns. I will list all the names of all this stuff for you, but I've got a little bit of um, black forest green. So we're just gonna put a teensy bit of that out. I've got some Hauser medium green. And let's get, oh yeah, this guy, he was giving me grief trying to squeeze him out. He's really thick. And that's okay, because we will be watering that down. And then celery green. All right. I also, oh, there we go. Mixing my stuff up here, okay. I got some charcoal gray. You could use like a, a brown umber even if you wanted to. Um, and then milk chocolate is what I have here. So. I'm just putting it all down on the wax paper and I will just move that out of the way so you can see. Okay, so we're gonna start with the greens. Here's some just rinsing my brush out. Okay, I want, I do want a fair bit of water. I just don't want, want a lot. And it, you know, I'm not using a lot of that um, black forest. I, I do really like the Hauser and the celery, but you just need a little bit of it to give it a little bit more depth. So I'm just mix those together. I am just crisscrossing, patting this on. And again, you want, you want lots of, lots of water here. Um, so 
It's not looking pretty, but that's okay. And spray down. I just want to start wiping this back. And you know what? Every single one of these that you do looks different. I mean, I did three all at the same time. And I mean, they all look coordinated and they work together, but some of them have more green, some of them have more brown, some of them are, well, more white. Okay, so I was gonna dip my baby wipe in the water because I had it a little bit too thick right there. And I just wanna pull some of that, that paint back. Okay, then I wanna pull in some browns. I'm not, I'm not worried if there's still some green, whoops, that's not it, if there's still some green in my, my brush. So I'm just mixing into both and I'm just laying on some brown and some random spots. Okay, and then we're going to just move it around. It's fairly wet, so you don't have to move it very much. Okay, so this is where this stage is at. This one is got a little bit of white left on it, so I'm gonna show you how to do that to make it look like this. And then, then we're gonna finish that guy off. So I just picked up a little bit more white and I went over this again with another layer. Now you can really see where the greens and the browns and that are staying in those deeper crevices that the plaster created. Okay. This is about the time where I stopped um, wiping it back because I do want these to be more white so I'm okay like you still need to have a movable paint so still put lots of water in it okay and just depending on how thick you go on is going to depend on how many times you go over the pot and the the look you're going for too right There's little pieces of terracotta in here that are falling out into my paint. Okay. So, I'm gonna leave this now. I want you to see where it's at. Um, it's pretty well covered. Like, I, I'm happy with that, but let's just let it dry to this. Um, we'll see what it looks like after. So I've got this guy. I put a pretty thin coat of white on with him. So I need to just dip in here. And I probably, I put more gray and brown on him too. That guy may have had more green, it's okay. I'm gonna start laying on thicker paint, but still add water if you need to because it does need to nicely move around so you don't get brush marks. Okay. This to me is where it just really comes to life and it starts looking more like the cement pots that you see. Whoopsies. These little pots are a little trickier to hang on to. You can't put your hand all the way in there. Okay. So you could, I'm not sure how much of the, the dark you're picking up because of the light on this camera, but there is a lot of dark spots in there too. Um, I'm happy with it. Like, I don't think that I will go over it anymore. And I just um, do a, a little bit of white around the lip. I don't go all the way in. 
you can you can go all the way in if you want into the pot but but I don't um, okay this guy he's still drying so I'm gonna leave him yeah these are still drying so start to finish that is what I did I would let this guy dry some more I'll find a place to put them so you can still see them just get these out of the way when he's completely dry I use um, well let me get a bottle that I don't have to show you upside down if you are going to like put a plant in here with with dirt and it's gonna touch the edge you want to seal your pot otherwise it's gonna come the water is gonna soak up in the terracotta right and then this finish will most likely start to come off because it is posture of Paris so what I did was the inside sealed it with patio paint um, it's this clear coat I use this on my stepping stones when I paint them um, and when I put them outside so and I've got stepping stones that have been outside for gosh like 15 plus years and this and the paint when painting them it works trust me so you can put this on the inside if you're just going to pop a pot in there um you don't have to maybe worry about it so much but or if you're putting an artificial plant in there then you definitely don't have to worry about it but coat of this it does give it a shine and i don't always like a shine um i like more of a matte finish this this does, I don't know if you can see it very well, but it has a slight, like almost like a satin, um, only because after I put the patio paint on, which gave it a good shine, I went over it again with a matte clear chalked. So depends on the look that you are going for to what you are going to do. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna take a second get this all cleaned up and adjust the camera angle so I can show you these tags. And we are gonna make, well, I got actually some of them sitting right here. So I'll show you, I'll show you again. So I've got these round little tags, um, plus these longer guys that are sitting there. And I've got some little rectangles um and some little squares so which would like hang off like a diamond there um like these are super cute these are cute on some of the smaller pots i want to put this up so you can see better so if you just wanted to have a little tag hanging off of them so i've got my heat press all ready i'm going to show you guys sublimation these um some of these i got from design blanks I think I'll link everything and then others I got off of Amazon these are little keychains off of Amazon but they work perfectly these are the guys I think I got off of design blanks so if you wanted to put this in the bathroom you could make like a cute fresh um, soap and water and maybe stuff some little towels in there and uh, hang that on there or if you want something a little bit more botanical you could do that too um, so I do sell some of these in my shop these are coming out in some collections but guys you can also make them yourself so I'm going to show you how to do that um, but I think I think that is that's good for right now I'm just going to like I say clean this up take a couple minutes get turned around so we can um, heat press these. All right, we will chat with you in a minute. Okay guys, um, I'm back. This isn't the best angle, um, but I gotta figure all this filming stuff out to get you guys the best angle. So I'll make sure that I um, come in close. So the first thing you need to do when you get these is there will be a plastic that you have to you have to take off okay on both sides you want to do that so that um, you're not heat pressing on the plastic really you'd probably just melt the plastic to it so okay 
So that's the first thing you need to do. Now, if you're new to sublimation, um, hopefully I will be able to come out with some more videos in the future. Sorry if you can't hear me that well, but hopefully I'll be able to come out with some more videos in the future to show you basics of sublimation. But otherwise, there's so many other great YouTubers out there that are going to show you that. So I have another mint and an oregano printed off um, that I can put on these. But I also have some cute little whimsical um, flowers. Let me see. Um, so I've got cute little gnome. This is really faded sublimation um, prints out faded. And then it gets more um, saturated and intense when you heat it up and sublimate it. Um, so we've got a few different ones, like there's cute little flower pots, there's a little birdie, um, talk dirt to me, so little gnomey with a bird and a flower pot, endless. I will put the links to these in there, but I did create these lilacs and hydrangea, so... Those are also part of one of my new collections. So I am going to sublimate one of those on here and then um, maybe I'll do the oregano or something. So uh, I need my tape. I gotta grab it. Hold on one sec. Okay, so you need to have um, tape that is meant for sublimation, okay? using that guy. Let's do this hydrangea first. I always like to hold it up to the light and then I can kind of see my design and know if I've got it on there straight or not. <laughs> That's Bean. She, uh, you remember her for some other videos. She uh, is being a little camera shy today. She probably wants her treats. <laughs> Okay, all I'm doing is I just trimmed my paper so that I can just take my tape, tape that on there. So my design is on top, okay? Um, it's just taped around, that light is not that good, guys, but so you can kind of see that. I have my heat press set at 345 degrees Fahrenheit um, and I forgot to check how many seconds I'm pressing for. Hold on one second. Um, I have... I don't like walking away from the video, but clearly I was not as organized as I thought I was going to be. Okay, 50 seconds is what I have in my notes. So, I am just up in my time to 50 seconds. This is all set and ready to go. Normally, I would um, put a few of them in here. We're just going to do this one right now. So, I have a piece of butcher paper, non-waxed butcher paper laying down here. I am putting my tag with the image on the top, on the top, like just right here. Another piece of butcher paper, blowout paper um, here, so that if that ink goes through the sublimation paper, it doesn't stain the bottom of my heat pot. Okay, this, um, I love this heat press. It's 15 by 15 inches, but it also has a sliding drawer too, which is fabulous when you're doing fabrics. Okay, it's a pretty good pressure um, that I have on this. I would say a medium pressure. I'm gonna set it 
and it's going to run for 50 seconds, okay? So I will be back when it's done and show you the result. Just 10 more seconds, guys. And we will see these results. Ella, you should have some heat gloves. These are going to be hot. So mine are over there. I'm not running away from the camera again. Okay. So just spin that around. You have to throw this away. This is a really big piece of paper. I could have used a smaller piece of paper on there, but sometimes that ink comes through onto here and it's so faint um, and you can't even see it, but if you take it and place that down and heat press something else, it could transfer and then you've ruined a project. So you do have to um, throw that away. Okay, tweezers. And I, I'll bring this closer to you. It's just really hot and I need to get it off. So I'm just peeling a piece of tape off, quickly lifting my paper because as soon as you bring it out of there, they do start to cool down pretty quick. So that's it. I know it's backwards for you guys because my camera isn't flipped properly. And normally when you sublimate, um, the prints actually read backwards um, on here. You guys are seeing it the right way. I know that's super confusing, but look at the difference in how it sublimates to what it printed. Like this is just so beautiful and soft watercolor. I've got, I've made pillows like this too. They're gorgeous. And I've made towels like this. Love them. They're so pretty. So. Then we can take it, tie it on, and you've got yourself a cute little tag if you wanna fill this with whatever. Um, towels, silk hydrangeas, a little plant. So I will style mine up and then I will show you guys how I finished them all off. If there's any questions, if I have missed something, didn't go through at all, let me know um, in the comments below and I will answer anything I can. And yeah, if you want to see more detail on things, let me know that too, because I can make these videos a smidge longer and show you some more details. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Bye.